Okay, 7-2. We are multiplying powers with the same base. Number 1 is asking me to rewrite the following expression using each base only once. Now, in order to multiply these, the bases have to be the same, and they are, so this is what we would do. Where we multiply expressions with exponents and they have the same base, the rule is to simply add the exponents together. So we have 8 being raised to 9 plus 5, we add 9 and 5 together, which is 14. So our answer is simply going to be 8 to the 14. So typing that in, and that is number 1. Number 2 is asking me to perform the indicated computation. Now notice we have two terms in scientific notation. That's how it wants the answer presented, so this is how we do that. So to multiply these together, we're going to have to multiply it in parts. First, start by multiplying the two constants without exponents together. So multiply the 3 and 6 together and get 18. So write that down here. Now we multiply the tens with the exponents together. So 10 squared times 4 squared means we have to add the exponents, so we'll get 10 to the 6. So we'll have 18 times 10 to the 6. Now we need to write that in scientific notation. It is not in scientific notation because 18 is larger than 10. You must have a number between 1 and 10 in order for this to be considered in scientific notation. So what we would do is first we realize that there is a decimal point in front of the 8 here, in the, eight, in the number 18, we just don't normally write it. We're going to have to move the decimal place to the left one place. That will give us 1.8, so now that is less than 10. So now what we will do is when we go to the left, think of this as the reverse of a number line. Normally going to the left means we go down. Going to the left means we have to add 1 to the exponent. Okay, so going to the left means we add 1. Going to the right means we subtract 1, or how many times we're going over. We only go over to the left once, so we only add once. So only add 1 to the 6, and we'll get 1.8 times 10 to the 7. So let's put it in for math Excel. So we have 1.8 times 10 to the 7th. That's number two. Okay, number three. It is asking you to rewrite the following expression using each base only one. We have 7 to the 5 times 7 to the 9. So let's look at that. So when the bases are the same and we're multiplying, we add the exponents. So we'll have 5 plus 9 in the exponent and we'll get 7 to the 14. So let's type that in. 7 to the 14. That's number three. Okay, number four. It is asking you to rewrite the expression using the base only once. So let's take a look at that. So all the bases are the same, so that means we add the exponents. Now notice how this number doesn't have an exponent written. It is understood that the exponent is one, so do not forget to include that. So if it helps, write a one above it so you know to count it. So now we're going to have 4 plus negative 8 plus 1, which will give you 2 to the negative 3. Now, it says for the answer to type it in an exponential notation. It does not want you to write it with a positive exponent in this case. So let's put it in Math Excel and I'll show you what they mean. So I'm going to type in 2 to the negative 3. And that's my answer. Notice in this case it did not want me to make it positive. If it does, it will tell you. Number five, it is asking you to multiply and simplify. So you have two variables now with the exponent. And it tells you to type your answer as one base to a non-negative power. So in this case, if our exponent is negative, it will want us to rewrite it. So let's look at it. Okay, so when bases are the same, we add the exponents when we multiply them. So we'll have k to the fifth. It's a positive exponent already, so there's nothing more to be done with it. So I'm going to type in k to the fifth for my answer. And that's number five. Let's look at number six. It is asking you 
what is the simplified form of the following expression? It's telling you to use positive exponents only. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so we have a couple different things going on. We have coefficients in front of each of the terms. And we have exponents in the variables to deal with. So first thing we're going to do is highlight the coefficients in front of each term with the same base. Because we notice that we can just multiply those together. So negative 3 times 7 is negative 21. Now we can take care of the variables and the exponents. Since these bases are the same, we can add the exponents. So we'll have x to the 2 plus 2. We add the exponents. So the answer would be negative 21 x to the 4. So I'm going to type in negative 21 x to the 4. And that's number 6. Okay, number 7. It is asking you to use the product rule to simplify the expression. And then it says to write the results using exponents. So let's take a look at that. So the first thing I notice is that all the variables are the same. But I always want to look at my coefficients first. I notice that there's nothing written in front of the z. It is understood then to have a coefficient of 1. So make sure you write it so you don't forget that. So now I highlight all of my coefficients and I can multiply them together. So 5 times negative 2 times 1 is negative 10. Now I can highlight all the variables with the same letter, which is the z's. So now I can add up those exponents together. 10 plus 8 plus 3 gives me 21. So my answer would be negative 10z to the 21. Okay, so I'm going to type in negative 10z to the 21. That's number seven. Okay, number eight. One of the brightest stars in the sky is Vega, which is part of the constellation Lyra. Vega is 26 light years from the Earth, and one light year equals 5.88 times 10 to the 12 miles. How far in miles is Vega? So let's take a look. Okay, so if we're given the amount of one light year, but we're looking for the amount of miles in 26 light years, we simply need to multiply 26 times the amount of miles. So, we multiply these together. We're going to highlight the numbers without the 10 to the 12 because that's being multiplied together. So, 26 times 5.88 gives me 152.88 times 10 to the 12. Now, we have to put that into scientific notation, which means the number here has to end up being less than 10. So, to do that, I'll move the decimal place to the left two places. So I'll have 1.5288. So then, bring down the 10 to the 12. Now when I go to the left two places, I need to add 2 to the exponent. Going to the left means I add. Going to the right means I subtract. So I'll have 1.5 288 times 10 to the 14 power. So now let's put that in. So typing that in, I'll have 1.5288 times 10 to the 14th power. And that's my answer for number 8. Okay, number 9, it is asking you to simplify the expression. Now we're given the number with an exponent that is a fraction. That means that you're going to be looking for the root of a number. So let's talk about a little bit more what this means. The fraction in an exponent represents two different things. The numerator represents the power that this number is being raised to, and the bottom number is the root that you're taking of it, meaning that you're looking for the fifth root of 1024. So if I rewrote it with a radical symbol, it would be the fifth root of 1024 all being raised to the first power, which we know anything to the first power is itself. So we're essentially looking for the fifth root of 1024. And the fifth root means a number that times itself five times, that will give you that number. So a certain number times itself five times will give you 1024. So let's go to the calculator and I'll show you how to do it in there. So I'm going to type 1024 I'm going to press this button to give you my exponents. Alpha, y equals, and enter. 
Now type in one, press down, and five, and then clear yourself from outside of the fraction. Now press enter, and we see I get four. So that means my answer itself is going to be four. So let's type that in on math Excel. So the answer will be four. That's number nine. So number 10, I can type in the same number here into the calculator to give me my answer. So I have 32 to the 2 fifths power. So let's put that in and see what we can. Okay, so we have 32 to the 2 fifths power. So alpha y equals and enter after I press the power button here. So 2 down 5, go outside the exponent in fraction. Press enter and I again get 4. Check answer, and that is number 10. Okay, number 11 is asking you to simplify the expression. Notice we have several variables with fractions as exponents. So we're going to go through how to take care of that. So what we need to do first is highlight all of our coefficients because we can multiply them all together. So 6 times 5 times 6 times 5 would be 900. Now what we're going to do is notice that these letters aren't all the same, but two of them are. We have C's and we have H's. So let's rewrite this with the C's together and the H's together. And then now we know when the bases are the same, we add the exponents. So 5 over 2 plus 7 over 8 means we'd have to add the fractions themselves together. So 5 over 2 plus 7 over 8 gives you 27 over 8. 7 over 8 plus 5 over 2 for the h's gives me h to the 27 over 8. So then this will be our answer. So let's put that in. So we have 900 c to the 27 over 8 and h to the 27 over 8. And that's number 11. Okay, number 12, it is asking you to complete the equation. So let's take a closer look at it. Basically, all it's asking is what number will be the exponent here, because we know that when we multiply variables with the same basis, we add the exponents. So what plus 3 would give you 10? It would be 7, so let's put that in. So the exponent would just be 7. 13. So I'm looking for the missing exponent again. So let's take a closer look at it. So again, we know if the bases are the same, you add the exponents together when we multiply them. So something plus negative 5 gives you negative 12. That would just be negative 7. So the answer will be negative 7.